And now, for today's topic. Man, I got bitten by like a shitload of mosquitoes last night. They really just went to town on me, like, like your mum at the Pizza Hut dessert buffet bar. Or like your mum on, uh, on my... <laughs> What's the video about again? These days, people say the words mobile game, the same way a Yu-Gi-Oh player says the word shower. <laughs> But it wasn't always this way. Despite only being around for about 10 years, smartphone gaming has seen drastic changes in this time, arguably more than traditional console and PC gaming. In theory, mobile games should be great. I mean, are you telling me that this little rectangular mother trucker is a gosh damn Nintendo? So what happened? Well, money happened. The Nintendo Wii should have done about as well as you'd expect for a console named after literal piss. But by telling its traditional audience to get fucked and aiming for a purely casual market, they perform better than I do at that jerk-off climbing game in Mario Party. That casual market is a fickle yet powerful force that, when utilized, is infinitely more profitable than a traditional gamer base. Casual consumers don't care about paying for microtransactions, unoriginal gameplay, or ads that make the game look like a sex pest simulator. They just want to come home after a hard day of milking cows, or driving a milk truck, or whatever else people with actual jobs do, and play a little game that distracts them from the futility of life and milk for a few minutes. They probably don't own a console or play games on the PC, and are the sort of people who have two kids at age 21 and don't realize that people can see the porn accounts they follow on their personal Instagram. Now, imagine if 81% of all adults in the US owned a Nintendo Switch. Besides making Nintendo enough money for them to buy an island in the Caribbean and turn it into a scale model of Isle Delfino, developers would be flocking to pump out whatever garbage they could for the console. With around 265 million people to sell to, you would inevitably find some schmuck willing to chow down on your ass game. That is the current mobile game market. 81% of all adults in the US own a smartphone, and that doesn't take into account the colossal mobile game market in places like China and South Korea. Now look, here at Mini Kudos Incorporated, we don't like to tackle the big issues. So if you want to see something about microtransactions and gameplay loops and all that shit that actually matters, then go and scrub to any part of a Jim Sterling video. And if you want to see the amazing atheist penetrate himself with a banana, then Google that, I guess. Uh, but here, we tackle the issues that really matter. Horrible mobile game ads. Mobile game ads are the unholy spawn of a large cash investment, scrupulous morals, and bad English. If you own a smartphone and at any point have glanced into EV games, you're going to be bombarded with these on any app that you use, including other mobile games, which is kind of funny. Imagine going to like McDonald's and there's a guy in the corner like, hey kid, you want some Burger King? These ads range from seedy to downright despicable and we use every trick in the book to try and get you to download their game. After all, when there are literally thousands of apps uploaded to the App Store every day, your only choices are to either trick someone into downloading your game or create a genuinely enjoyable experience that leaves players happy and satisfied. But nah, fuck that. Today we're going to explore these ads and prove that when it comes to marketing, they've only got about three ideas between them. Now, you have to appreciate just how quickly mobile game ads went down the shitter. I could be looking at these ads with a bit of blind nostalgia, because I probably still had a teddy in my mouth when they first came out. Because I loved drinking my mom's milk. It tastes much better than cow milk. Because even though it starts off a bit watery, after a few seconds it gets really creamy. Yum! But you have to admit that they're at least authentic and genuine in their message. All of these ads feature a sizable chunk of actual gameplay, and even the ones that have little skits or animations or something still end with a decent bit of gameplay being shown. So like, what happened man? Sorry neighbours. My theory is that the current format of social media has made them increasingly desperate. The ability to skip an ad after 5 seconds on YouTube, or scroll past an ad on Facebook or Instagram has forced them to try and grab your attention through any means necessary, like an ugly girl with her asshole out on Tinder. To be fair, I actually have no idea where the fuck these ads were even played. I don't remember seeing them on YouTube at the time, although it's possible that YouTube just doesn't serve ads to people living in a ditch in New Zealand. First of all, we have The Challenge. You've absolutely seen these before. It's that sort of shit where it's like, I just don't know how to make green. Is it red and blue? I don't, I don't know. This is, by far, the most common type of mobile game ad that you're going to come across. This consists of showing a user fucking up something in the game that's so simple that you, the viewer, know that because you weren't born with a hole in your head, outside of the designated holes, uh, that you should be able to do it easily. 
It's the equivalent of hearing a podcast where one of the hosts gets something wrong in a topic that you personally know a lot about, or like when they used to talk about video games on the news back in the day. It's called a PlayStation. It's an electronic gaming computer device that shot to the top of every kid's Christmas list. But many parents are reporting that these gaming machines appear to be infested or possibly run by bees. Here's John with the report. There's this strange sort of unacknowledged dynamic at play here. Is it the advertiser saying that they're shit at the game? Or do you reckon it's meant to sort of blend in with the other content on your timeline, as though I'm to believe one of my random Facebook friends is bragging about how bad they are at a random app? Then again, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the minces on my Facebook pulled some shit like this, so who am I kidding? My favourite part here is the fountain of feces. Usually advertisers are kind of coy when it comes to referring to the fact that people shit. I'm sure we've all seen those toilet cleaner ads where it's like, oh it stops stains or it cleans mess. Instead of being like, yeah if there's a fat daddy do sliding down the bowl, it's gonna be a-okay. What the fuck? Yeah, no shit no one's ever reached New York. It's a skypox texture, it's not actually part of the level. Do you think that's why the whole myth of the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow exists? Because rainbows are kind of like skybox textures, so no one's ever actually been able to reach one. Cool, so I guess your game being broken is now a selling point. This doesn't even show a Dingus 5000 missing by a mile. He was clearly aiming perfectly and it still missed. Uh, when they did it perfectly they missed, but maybe when I play they might miss? Now, I don't actually think there's anything inherently wrong with using cinematic footage to try and sell a game. It's about as useful as nipples on a man when it comes to showcasing actual gameplay. But if it means 3D artists like myself get some of that cheddar, then hey, I'm not complaining. The problem here is when you try and pass off clearly pre-rendered footage as actual gameplay. If any game exemplifies this, it's Legacy of Discord. Legacy of Discord is one of those games that looks at good character design and says, Get out of here! Put you in the bin! You know in a traditional RPG like Diablo or World of Warcraft, where only the highest level, max rank, no life players are the guys who have the really flashy armor with the glowy bits and the particle effects dripping everywhere. Trashy mobile games like Legacy of Discord look at that and say, what if we give that to every player? Forgetting that once everybody looks badass, nobody does. This section here shows a bunch of flying characters traversing through uh, uh, the elf realm. If you were to see this and not look too close, you would probably assume this is all in game, right? I mean, they even put a little fake UI over it with the minimap that moves, you know, semi-realistically. Now let's see what the game actually looks like. Okay, I'll be honest, I was expecting something a lot worse than this. I mean, the UI looks pretty atrocious. <laughs> It was I who created the equipment with the power for transformation. Let's try our luck at the mystic chest again. Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. But otherwise, why not just show actual gameplay? I mean, it sort of just looks like Diablo, but for mobile. I mean, surely there must be a sizable audience out there for something like this, right? Is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> Fuck! Hmm. Yep, yeah, no, good point. Usually when they use fake footage, it's because the actual game is ass, and they want to trick you into downloading it, hoping that perhaps the sunk cost fallacy will keep you playing even after you realize you've been swindled. But sometimes the ads are actually much worse than the game. Take a look at this ad for Garnscapes. Well, this sucks, obviously. But let's see what the actual game looks like. 
You're now the owner of a beautiful, if abandoned garden that Austin the Butler will help you renovate. I mean, this art style looks great, right? Why would you outsource your marketing to a fucking goblin living under a bridge when you've got a fantastic ad for it right here? Like, am I missing something? Am I truly dumb? Don't answer that. So, early impressions. I'm thinking some kind of adventure game, you know, like a choose your own story sort of deal. Okay, well that's an interesting name for a story game, but, you know, names can be deceiving. Uh, let's see what the actual game looks like. Oh, okay. Uh, so, it's not a story game. Uh, it's a tile matching game. This is how you chose to market a tile matching game? There's actually too many apps to list when it comes to showing fake footage. And a lot of them have crossover with some of the other themes we're discussing today, such as. The whole multi-choice gameplay thing is something that you're also gonna see quite a lot in these mobile game ads. And it's something that you've already seen quite a bit in this video. While I'm sure that there's some of these story-based games that actually have these binary choices in them, surely if you sold a base building strategy game as some kind of story-based adventure where your choices matter, players would immediately delete it once they download it and realize it's not what they signed on for. Or am I once again giving too much credit to the human race? Yeah, don't leave me please. <laughs> My light, he wants to divorce. He's not taking anymore. Nobody wants me. Guilty of what? Wanting a divorce? I mean, I, I guess he is guilty of that. And then top it all off with Gangnam Style over a nice peaceful backing track. Uh, what year was this made again? 2019? Okay. Cool. Oh, 724. Okay. That rolls off the tongue. I can see they've taken inspiration from America's calendar system. Oh my god, she can't even talk. Yeah, that's why he's with her. Am I right, fellas? Is he thinking about Baby Shark again? Nah, that's it. I want a divorce. Now look. I hate women as much as the next guy, but these ads cross the line from creepy into full-on degenerate. I suppose incels are a good market to try and corner, because after all, it's not like they're spending any money on a girlfriend. What's the bit they just downloaded a 3D anatomy model and they were like, how can we make a game out of this? Are we really going for the sexual ploy on this one? A horny idiot's really gonna download this game just so they can catch a glimpse of a 3D model of a woman with half her skin missing? Don't answer that, actually. Oh, this girl's a little shy. Let me see if feeling? I can get her out of her shell. Oh, you like that girl? Yeah, you Want like that. Feeling? How you doing? Oh, hello. You hey, you oh, further, okay. Right? I appreciate their honesty. Like. They're not implying that the game is played exclusively by attractive petite girls like some of the other ads out there. So nice on her. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, ooh, you can treat me anytime, girl. Anytime. Ooh, blow me a kiss, hell yeah. Hey everyone, I'm back again. And now, a lot of people like to say that to successfully advertise you can only use eye-catching content to generate views. Now, I disagree. We make advertisements that are real, so people can see and know exactly what they're getting in the game. There are no gimmicks, there's no marketing speech. Come over to daddy. You're just getting the game as it is so that you can decide if it's what you want to experience. See, I could be at home right now, resting up after a long and late New Year's Eve, but I couldn't wait any longer, because the critics, they can dismiss me. The naysayers can complain, and the gamer gatekeepers can scoff. But you know what? Gaming is about entertainment, and only you can decide what is entertainment for you. So, let's play again. 
oh, what's nice as well is also there's a 360 degree rotating camera. I mean, yep, why not? Didn't expect that, uh, but I respect the grind and uh, you, you keep doing you, buddy. These games have a strange fixation with treating women like property, implying you can collect them for your team. Not hire or recruit, collect. Which, I mean, would be great if you could do that in real life, but unless you're a Nissi and that doesn't seem to be the case. Why did my last video get demonetized again? Because I said cunt in it. And these are the kind of ads that they're running. Awesome, nice one. Totally cool with that. This is a game about gardening. <laughs> Why are you trying to sell it as some kind of laundry squirting simulator? Now, while mobile game ads tend to treat women like a flank of tasty fuck meat, they are surprisingly progressive when it comes to praising their skill at playing these games. You often see this in the form of mum versus dad, or GF versus BF, where the guy is usually like a bumbling idiot, and the girl's like Stephen Hawking um, if he had motor skills and wasted his time learning to play mobile games. Again, I'm not really too sure what the angle they're going for is here. Like, is a guy gonna look at this and be like, my girlfriend is not better than me at playing video games. Download this app right now, woman. I need to put you in your fucking place. I got a bit real. Oh, see, now this one here actually makes sense. The only thing stupider than people who fall for these ads are people who believe in astrology. It's sort of like how scam emails purposefully misspell things so that they weed out anyone with an actual brain and only real and genuine suckers. <laughs> you right there, Dad? Your pug's looking a bit licensed character ice cream that someone left out in the sun and then uh, tried to eat with their forehead. Now I'm sure most of you have come across Mafia City, a series of hilariously bad ads that exemplify pretty much every single one of the sins mentioned in this video. Through the sheer magnitude of them, as well as the hilarious level of incompetence on display, they took off as a meme, which had several large YouTubers slapping their bellies and having a good old giggle at their expense. While it's possible the marketing team behind Mafia City was going for the meme angle, they'd have to be creamy memers of the highest authority. After all, it takes a lot of skill to create a bad video on purpose and still have it look natural. Of course, Mafia City wasn't the only game to see success from its status as a meme. Flappy Bird, the game, not the slang term for a prostitute, was infamous for being easy to learn and hard to master. And as a result, it spread like wildfire on social media. Games that turn into memes are highly lucrative for the developers, as it's like being handed a multi-million dollar marketing budget free of charge. Games like this can be the perfect example of the phrase, no publicity is bad publicity, as even a shitty game like Mafia City can find success with people downloading it just to see what the fuss is all about. Hey guys, it's me, Flying Gorilla, from my new app on the App Store, Flying Gorilla. It's a free download, so I hope you, you check it out, and, and I hope... If coming up with an original way to sell your game is too difficult, then why not just try ripping off Video Game Donkey? I'm sure that'll work fantastic. That, that's not actually sarcasm. While this isn't setting out to become its own meme, you may have noticed that in this and a few others, they just kind of haphazardly throw an already established meme in there in the hope that there will be like a convenient substitute for an actual joke. I think this is my personal favorite because it doesn't even make sense within the context of this ad. Like Johnny Boy here is me right now, looking at this meme, trying to figure out why he's in this meme. So, there you have it. A thorough breakdown of dog shit mobile game ads. This list will inevitably continue to grow, as even since writing I've already started to notice a few new tropes pop their ugly heads up. How about you let me know in the comments which mobile game ads you love to hate the most. Shit, just realised I did an entire video on mobile game ads and I didn't mention Raid a single time. Well, while we're here, Raid Shadow-